Welcome back to Terpy Eyes. I'm Ryan, and this video is sponsored by Viper Spectra. They've provided us with the KS3000 LED grow light for this grow cycle. The KS series of lights come in a few different sizes and are built with quality components, making the Viper Spectra KS series of lights a great choice for any home grower. They've provided the discount code Terpy Eyes that can be used on their website for any of the products that they offer. This video is a complete grow cycle of the most recent grow on the channel, and will cover everything from the equipment that we are using, the setup, and from seed to harvest. If you followed along with the episode videos previously, then you would have already seen most of this video. So thank you for following along with those shorter videos. This video is for the people who only like the complete seed to harvest videos or want to have a full recap in a single video to follow along with. We are using a 3x3 grow tent for this grow series and it is from AC Infinity. This is the first AC Infinity grow tent that I've used and for the price point I'm pretty happy with the quality overall and the design. You've seen me use the AC Infinity inline fans in most of my other grow tent setups on the channel and we've always had great results and quality when using the AC Infinity products. Any brands you've seen me use on the channel can use the discount code TERPIES on their website along with more info and links will be in the video description below so be sure to check that out after the video. Since we put together so many tents on the channel, we will speed up through this entire process. I've seen a bunch of comments in the past of why I don't turn this room into a full grow room instead of using multiple tents inside this space. The reason for using grow tents in this space is because it allows everything to be contained inside the grow tent along with being somewhat temporary which allows for everything to be removed quickly if needed and not having to do any repairs to the walls or ceilings. We are using a 6 inch inline fan and carbon filter for this 3x3 setup which makes the fan and filter a little oversized for the space since the specific fan doesn't have much adjustability from the speed control controller that it has. Having an oversized fan will make it a little bit more challenging when trying to keep the temperature and humidity in an optimal range to stay in our vapor pressure deficit reading amount to achieve optimal growth. Our pre-filter that was stored with the filter ended up being the wrong size and was meant for a 4 inch filter. Then when I did locate the correct size pre-filter it was eaten a bit by a mouse. So my last option was to run this filter without a pre-filter. Because this filter was already used a few times with plant previously it would have been at the end of its life cycle anyways at the end of this grow. So it wasn't an issue not using a pre-filter on this filter as we would have just thrown this filter out at the end of this grow anyways. We are using adjustable rope hangers to secure the fan and filter combo inside the tent along with the LED light. Personally I like to use adjustable rope hangers as much as possible as it allows for the unlimited adjustability and positioning of the equipment along with quick disassembly when it's time to remove everything. As we put one of the last pieces of equipment into the grow tent, which is the KS3000 LED grow light, we also do add a 6 inch clip fan for air circulation above the canopy, along with a Pulse One environmental monitor, which will collect all the data we need from the environment inside the grow tent. We'll look over that data later in the video on the interactive charts that Pulse offers later on in the video to show not only how the grow environment is, but how valuable the Pulse monitors are for any grow space. We are starting out the series with a pack of seeds from Garden State Genetics, which is a strain called Jumanji. 
These are regular seeds, so we'll have to determine which plants are males and which plants are females, which we'll do later in this video. To get these seeds started, we are soaking them in straight tap water in a shot glass and placing them in a cool dark place for 36 to 48 hours or until the seeds start to pop open and form a small tap root. In this case, we only had to wait 36 hours to see them pop open, which meant that they were ready to be placed in a starter pot. We're using thin wall 3.5 inch by 3.5 inch pots to get these seeds started and filling the pots with Promix HP. Since Promix HP is a zero nutrient value in it, we are using Clonex clone solution at a rate of 7 milliliters per liter of water to pre-soak the growing medium with about 30 milliliters of the mix before we're moving on to dropping the seeds into each of the pots. Promix HP is a peat-based growing medium which includes limited ingredients being peat moss, perlite, and mycorrhizal. The HP in the name stands for high porosity which means it allows air through the growing medium quite easily, making a great choice for cannabis grows. With the seeds in the pots and lightly covered with growing medium, we can put another 30 milliliters of the Clonex clone solution mix into each of the pots, the total being 60 milliliters, making sure that all the growing medium in each of the pots is evenly saturated. Now that the first week has been completed, we can see 9 out of the 10 seeds have come up out of the growing medium, which I'm very happy to see. I did have the Vipar Spectra KS3000 LED light on for 24 hours per day at the start of this grow for longer than I would have wanted to. But I was busy and forgot to connect the light timer. I'll be sure to let you guys know later in this video at which point I switched the light schedule to 18 hours on and 6 hours off. Our temperature was around 70 degrees Fahrenheit which is a lot lower than I would have liked in the seedling stage and our relative humidity was regularly below 20% a lot of the time which definitely made things a little difficult. The low humidity is because I was leaving the tent door open so the air from inside the house was already very low humidity. Since this grow was completed in the middle of winter in Canada. The furnace from my house was drying out any humidity I was able to build up in the grow space. Yes, I should have added a humidifier, but I was working with what I already had and this can also show you guys what you can expect when you're missing a humidifier in your run and running low humidity in your grow space. All right guys, we're gonna get some uh, sex testing done. We're gonna be using Farmer Freeman as the lab to do our sex testing. They also do um, plant virus testing. So if you want to check for any of these um, viruses in your plant, you can go ahead and get the virus testing done from them also, which I have done on all my mother plants recently, which all came back negative. Thank you for Farmer Freeman for doing that. Um, so for the sex testing, all we need to do is, these come in packs of 10 if you wanna buy, buy bulk or 100, or you can just buy one. So there is a sample number on the back of it. Once you open it, um, inside the envelope, you'll also get a little plant tag. Confirm that the two numbers do match. And then all we need to do is put the tag into the plant that we're gonna sex test. All we're gonna do is chop off the tip of a leaf just like this. And because I am in Canada, if you're in the States, cause that's where they are located. Um, if you're in the States, all you would have to do is put this leaf tip into the envelope close it up and send it to them. But because I'm in Canada and it's international, we have to go th through one more step. So we take the leaf tip and these are called smash cards. So all we do is roll up the leaf tip, just like that into a small ball. We take our smash card, which is a piece of paper. And then there's a clear um, piece also. We sandwich, sandwich the leaf tip in between the two. So you can see that now it's sandwiched, it's in there. All I do is take the back side of my scissors because it's a hard object, put it on the table right here and just go ahead and um, put a lot of pressure down on it. Move the um, scissors back and forth just until all the juices of the leaf come out onto the paper. And you're gonna wanna do this quite a bit what we're looking for is on the back of the paper here, as you can see, the moisture has penetrated all the way to the back of the card and we're left with the leaf on the other side. If you want, you can scrape away the leaf and get it out of there. I just leave it on there just not because I'm not con too concerned of uh, borders, border agents taking this because there is no THC on here anyways. So all we do is we take our sample, open up the envelope, Put it in there. Do not use this adhesive that comes on the envelope. 
All you need to do is use the green sticker, put some pressure on it, and it's closed. That's all. That's all you got to do for each of the plants. So we'll continue on doing the rest of them. I did lower the power of the light down to 60% at this point, as I wasn't liking the nutrient deficiencies or burning happening on the tips of the leaves. This could have been caused by either light intensity and or letting the growing medium dry out a bit too much between waterings. The seedlings did get a little taller than I would have liked, which could have been resolved by keeping the light intensity stronger, but because of our low humidity in the grow tent, we are not able to push the plants very hard at this point since we are lacking in the humidity department. Just got done our sex testing from Farmer Freeman. So we got our results right here. If you want to check them out, you can use the discount code Chirpy Eyes. So I already have cross-referenced these uh, plant tags with the results already here. And uh, if they're at the front on the right-hand side, it means that it's a male. And if they're at the back left, then it's a female. So out of the plants that did come up, we have four female plants. This one's kind of a runt, so I don't, I don't think I'm going to grow that one out. But uh, we'll remove the three females so we can transplant those into bigger pots now. So here's a female, which is pretty good size. A little bit of deficiency right there, but that's okay. There's another female. Decent. And then this back middle one. So we got the three, three females there that are, we're gonna keep. This is a female also, but it's just such a runt compared to the other ones that I don't think I'm going to keep it. Um, it's not really even growing properly. So we're gonna get rid of that as it's a mutation. Female plants separated from the male plants, we can transplant them into the larger pots, which will be their final pot size for this grow. Because we're going straight into the final pot size, we're using four gallon pots for this cycle. I think the one extra gallon will help with not becoming root bound, which causes deficiencies later on in flower. When the plants are much bigger compared to the three gallon pots I usually use in most of my previous grow series on the channel. During this transplanting, I am also topping each of the Jumanji plants by pinching off the top growth, which will help with both bushing out the plant along with multiplying the amount of colas we get during harvest time. We are continuing to use Promix HP as the growing medium for the remainder of this grow. Since we only got three female plants from this strain and ended up with seven females in another grow tent series I was doing at the exact same time in a 2x4 grow tent, I thought it was a much better choice to swap locations and put the Jumanji plants in the 2x4 grow tent and introduce the seven female plants into this grow series. From this point forward, we're now growing Tropic Lightning from Ocean Grown Seed. They are the exact same age as the Jumanji plants and have had all the same conditions and techniques done to them up until this point, the only difference being that the Tropic Lightning lightning plants are in three gallon pots. Also, one of the plants has not been sex tested, so we'll have to wait for it to show sex naturally before determining if it can stay in the tent or not. This will also give us a good example just how much faster sex testing is compared to waiting for the plants to show sex naturally, proving how valuable this service is and because we are able to save so much time on materials and electricity which would all be wasted on a male plant. After completing the transplanting, which switched the light schedule to 18 hours on and 6 hours off. One thing I should have done is fully saturated the growing medium in the pots after transplanting, which would have drastically helped keeping these plants healthy along with not underwatering while I was away from the tents for several days at a time.
We are feeding the tropic lightning plants from front row egg nutrients since the transplant and just following the recommended feeding chart from their website which has been giving me great results in all of my grow tents along with the nine light grow room. If you're interested in the using the front row egg nutrients the discount code terpies can be used on their website to receive 40% off any of the products that they offer on their website. This grow tent is located next to a sliding glass door and winters here in Canada are super cold with temperatures regularly under negative 15 degrees Celsius which made things a little challenging when getting the grow environment to its optimal range so we had a steady temperature around 66 degrees Fahrenheit and a 26% relative humidity during this entire veg period which had a big impact on these plants growing very slowly and staying small. With that being said as they did get a little bigger the health of the plants drastically improved and started to fill out the entire 3x3 grow tent. Keep the seven tropic lightning plants happy and watered regularly, I've been watering about two liters of front row egg nutrient mix pH to 5.8 and watering every two to three days, which allows the growing medium to dry out enough between waterings and still remain happy without becoming underwatered. As you can see, I'm using a 20 gallon garbage can as a reservoir and feeding each of the grow tents out of the same res, which makes things much easier when servicing multiple grow tents at the same time, which saves a lot of time. We are still waiting for this one plant that was not sex tested to show which sex it is so hopefully soon it will show so we can flip this tent and plants into flower stage Because we need some more time for the plants to show sex along with the other grow tents to get a little bit bigger to keep all the tents on the same schedule, we're going to strip the seven tropic lightning plants of their large fan leaves that are located on the main stem of each of the plants. Don't forget, if you're enjoying the video so far or have found it at all helpful, to hit that like button. It really goes a long way in supporting the channel and helping us grow. And if you're new to the channel, I upload videos every week covering indoor and outdoor grows, solventless extractions, products and equipment. So if that's what you're into, please hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell notification so you don't miss out when I post new content. By removing all the large fan leaves, it will also help with the lower branches receiving more light and airflow, which will hopefully allow for them to reach higher and become even with the higher branches. This leaf strip is also needed for having so many plants in such a small tent. I'd rather be growing only four plants in a 3x3 grow tent, but because this grow serves as a small phenohan, it's needed to grow out at least a full pack of seeds to find the best option from that pack. As we enter into the final week of the veg stage, it's very noticeable to see how small these plants are for getting into the 60 day range. This is a great example to show how much environment has an impact on how fast the plants grow. Although these plants are pretty healthy, we could have got them to this size in about half the time with a more ideal environment. We were finally able to determine the sex of the single plant that was not sex tested and it turned out to be a male plant. So it was time to remove it from the tent. I'm actually pretty happy that it turned out to be a male plant because it opened up some space for the remaining plant. It was a little overcrowded already so later in flower it would have been an issue. We have switched our light schedule to 12 hours on and 12 hours off along with turning our Viper Spectra KS3000 LED light up to 80% power because we reduced our light on time we were able to increase the light intensity to raise our DLI reading to get the most growth from these plants. We also changed our feeding schedule of front row egg nutrients to follow their feeding chart for week one 
on a flower. Feeding charts can be found on their website to fit your growth style. Even though these plants are much smaller than I normally grow, we still have a very full tent. I think this is a few too many plants for a 3x3 three three grow tent. Rather keep it between 4 or 5 plants for this size space. We have been able to keep these plants healthy through the stretch and transition stage of the start of flower. There were a couple days these plants did dry out slightly more than I would have liked to see, but still far less dry backs than we have seen on the channel in the past. Okay guys, I just want to jump on the Pulse dashboard. Here are all my devices that I have. As you can see, none of them are connected right now as I am transitioning into moving in, into a new location. But for today's grow, we're checking out the Vibra Spectra KS3000 grow. This is the chart. I've already lined up the dates. So I'll pull up the, the dates for this grow. This is going to be a little tight as it is a big time frame. So I'll just zoom in here. This is the start of the grow. And then we had our light on for 20 24 hours in the seedling stage and start a veg. Then we switch to 18 hours on and six hours off, which is this area here. And then you can see that we switch to flower stage right here on the right hand side. We'll look at our relative humidity. As you can see, we had an average around 30% relative humidity all the way across the board, which was much lower than anybody would ever want in the growing stages in all stages, but our temperatures were lower. So it didn't make it too terribly on the environment as our 70 degrees average temperature. And then we dropped down a bit down here around 65, depending on the weather in my area, because I live in Canada, it did affect these, this specific grow tent quite a bit as it was next to a sliding glass door which was, was not insulated very well. So it did affect the temperatures inside the grow tent. As you can see, the temperature stays steady the entire way in the mid 60s degree Fahrenheit and our relative humidity was down there. If you can look at the vapor pressure deficit though, it stayed anywhere between 0.4 and 0.6, which is actually a pretty good range for the flower stage. So as long as your relative humidity and your temperature are in line to give you a good vapor pressure deficit reading, the plants do grow pretty well, just a little bit slower than ideal. So if you wanna check out more information on this specific grow and chart, you can actually click on this link in the video description below and you can interact with it here and look at it in more detail. You can check out the different parameters like the air pressure, temperature, the light intensity, the dew point, everything. So that was a qu quick overview for this stage of growth. I'll link this in the video description. And if you guys want to check out the pulse monitors for environment, I'll also link that in the video description. You can use the code terpyhize for a nice discount on those products. Let's jump back into the video. The tropic lightning plants have been pretty easy to grow. We have kept the DLI in the perfect range so the plants have not been stressed by tr us trying to push them too hard, which causes stress and ends up damaging the plants in the long term when pushed a bit too hard. We are now at day 25 of flower, so it's time to open up some more space in the tent to increase both airflow and light penetration. So we needed to do a defoliation, but unlike the previous defoliation we did before flower, where we only remove the large fan leaves from the main stalk. This time we're gonna remove the large fan leaves from every branch. After completing this defoliation, the plant and the tent might look a little like we removed a bit too much, but trust the process. Over the next two weeks, the leaves will grow back and fill in those spaces again. The defoliation also helps with bud development on the middle and lower sections of the plant which gives us a much more even sized bud across the entire plant instead of only having large buds up top and either popcorn sized buds or larf in the middle and lower sections of the plant. Personally, I'm looking to get as many flowers that are similar sizes come harvest time. I found this is the most efficient way of increasing yields while growing. Let's take a look at how I measure and mix the front row egg nutrients. Since this nutrient line comes dry, we can either choose to make our own liquid stock bottles or we can measure dry amounts by weight for our reservoir. I choose to mix dry as it's easier for my situation. We are also using front row SI, which is the first additive to be added into our res. And we let that mix for about 10 minutes before adding the other parts into the reservoir. One of the most important parts about mixing dry nutrients is getting it fully dissolved in the water before adding it to 
to either the res tank or your plants. To make it easy work, I use a magnetic stirrer. Some people say this is a waste of resources, but it saves me from sitting there stirring for about 10 minutes, which allows me to do other tasks while the nutrients dissolve. The most important part of any operation is time, and if you can find ways multitasking to complete multiple things at the same time, then those resources are far from wasted. My res tank holds about 20 gallons of water. I found how I water my plants and that I do limited runoff that reducing the strength of the nutrients down to about 70% strength has kept my plants healthy and growing strong. Everyone's situation is slightly different, so you have to find what works best for your location. Because I am working with low humidity, that is another reason to not feed with full strength nutrients because the plants aren't growing at full speed so the extra nutrients isn't needed and it would end up building up in the growing medium, raising the EC levels and burning the plants eventually. As we finish off measuring the final part, which is the bloom, it's noteworthy we are keeping the res tank at a pH level of 5.9 for this stage of growth, and we'll raise the pH level a bit each week throughout the flower stage until we get up to 6.1 pH. Link to the Front Row Egg website and feeding charts along with the nutrient calculator will be linked in the video description below, so be sure to check those out after the video. If you're not following me on Instagram, there are some big early reveals showing what's coming to the channel in the near future. So if you're interested in seeing what's going on and being planned, be sure to follow me on Instagram at TerpyHize for more up-to-date posts on what's going on and what the future holds for this channel. As we pass the midway point through flower, we can see that the tent is filled wall to wall with tops and we should see a very decently sized harvest from these small plants come harvest time. Now that we've had a quick look at the plants during day 42 of flower, we can notice some tip burn on the leaves. I believe this was caused from letting the growing medium dry out a bit too much between waterings a few times, but honestly the damage isn't anything too drastic to worry about at this point, but it's something to note that can be improved on for a next round of plants. Around the day 40 mark is a good time where we could do a second leaf strip to the plants to remove any large fan leaves to open up space for both light and air movement for this grow. But for this grow, we decided to skip that to see how the plants would turn out without doing a second leaf strip. With such small short plants, it wouldn't have made much of a difference anyways, but when growing taller and larger plants, a second leaf strip would definitely make a big impact and difference along with helping during the harvesting process. So we covered the environmental conditions from the start of our growth up until day 45 of flower. I've already pre-selected the dates here from day 45 of flower up until our harvest, which we gave two or three days of pure darkness, so no lights on here. We'll open up the chart here that you guys can check out after the video. If you like, the link will be in the video description below. I've already pre-selected the dates. This is the exact chart that you'll be able to interact with if you would like to click on the the link in the video description. So here on the left is day 45. The yellow indicates the lights are on and the obviously no yellow indicates the lights are off. Um, it gives us all of our data points. You can see that our temperature is pretty stable around 65 degrees Fahrenheit and our relative humidity is between 30 and 40% relative humidity all the way across the board. Obviously both the temperature and relative humidity is super low for your flower stage, but it is my conditions that I had to work with. Keeping those two 
parameters in check allows the vapor pressure deficit to stay around 1.4 to 1.5, which is ideal for the flower stage. What we are looking for that's changing a lot is this air pressure. As you can see, the, it goes almost all the way off the graph here on the right hand side. That is because we're using only an exhaust fan in our grow tent. So we do have quite a bit of air pressure being sucked out of the tent because we were using a six inch inline fan in a three by three grow tent, which is a little oversized for the grow space. But overall, um, not too bad of conditions, even though the temperature and humidity is super low. Anyways, um, you guys can check this out. All the highs and lows are down here. If you're interested in the Pulse products, the environmental monitors, both the Pulse 1 and the Pulse Pro, along with their hub, which you can add sensors to like your um, moisture content sensor, pH sensor, and a bunch of other things are all available on the Pulse website. You can use the discount code TERPYHIGHS to receive a big discount on all those products. Let's get back into the video. So I was in a little time crunch, which made me have to harvest these plants a little earlier than they could finish, which I'll fill you in why that happened in a couple videos. But as we entered into the final week of flower for this grow, it was noticeable that these tropic lightning plants would need a much more time to finish properly. Unfortunately, I was out of time, so we had to start flushing these plants early by giving the plants straight water for about five days to hopefully speed up the finishing time. I knew that they wouldn't finish completely, but it was the only action I could take to speed these up a bit. Well, we decided it was a harvest day at day 60, even though these plants could have gone to at least day 70 to get the full potency out of this strain. We definitely maximized this small 3x3 grow tent by filling the tent wall to wall with colos. There was room to improve on by pushing these plants a little harder and longer to increase the final yield numbers, but given the temperature and humidity during this entire growth cycle and having a short flowering schedule for the strain, the flowers still turned out very frosty and dense even though they are on the smaller side. To get these plants harvested and to be ready to be hung to dry, we are removing the remaining leaves that have stems. This will help reduce the plant material inside the dry tent and allow all the branches to dry evenly. Because I'm drying single branches, I'm doing my best to cut each of the branches off the plant at the same length. This gives us the best opportunity for all the branches to be dried the same amount at the end of the dry time. If you're new to the channel, I upload videos every week covering indoor and outdoor grows, solventless extractions, products, and equipment. So if that's what you're into, please hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell notification so you don't miss out when I post new content. As we work our way through the tent, removing one branch at a time, we are trying to do it as fast as possible so we can hang the branches in the dry tent before we start to see any flat spots on any of the buds from having them being stacked up or laying down. Dry tent is located in a different area of the house, which is fairly far away from this tent. So it was easiest just to do it all in one trip to hang dry them. If we weren't making a video, multiple trips would have been better to ensure that we didn't get any flat spots on the branches, which could affect the drying process along with the bag of peel once trimmed. With all the plants harvested, we can get to cleaning out the tent by removing any remaining plant material in the pots. Since this is the end of using this setup, we'll also take it down after a quick look at the dry tent and our branches that are hung to dry. This tent actually has the Jumanji strain harvested in it also currently, which we started this series out with, but had to move those plants to another grow tent setup, so it's good to see that we get a quick look at that harvest also. All I do for a dry tent setup is get my exhaust fan to go on if the humidity raises above 62%, which with a full grow tent setup usually takes anywhere between 7 and 10 days to dry out the entire harvest, so it's ready to be trimmed. The time mainly is affected by the humidity of the air that's being intaken 
baked into the grow tent. So everyone's location might be affected differently. Well, that's the end of this location and the setup. I do have three other grow tent series recorded for this location that I'll share with you next, but I have relocated once again to a new spot, so you'll all see what's coming shortly. Until next time, happy growing everyone, and remember to get out there and make it happen.